Good morning. So today is pretty wild. Um, we are having Mystery Monday. It's our third episode here at Springville Senior Center uh, while we are closed. And I wanted to talk to you about a man named Mark Twitchell. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but that's kind of how it's spelled. Mark Twitchell is the Dexter killer. Uh, he is the one that they have based the movie, uh, the TV series, Dexter Morgan off of. So here's our actor who portrays Dexter Morgan, and here's Mark himself. He looks sweet and innocent, but guys, he is not. Um, we have it where he has tried to, um, he hurt a victim, the guy got away, and then he also killed a man by the name of John Bryan, they called him Johnny Altinger. Now, in a gruesome instance of life imitating art, Mark Twitchell, who was 29 years old, took his obsession with Dexter to a grim conclusion. Now, he was married amateur filmmaker from Edmonton, Canada. He had an eight-month-old daughter, and he was also in the process of finding a low-budget Star Wars Tribune uh, film titled Secrets of the Rebellion back in 2007. Now, he he just um it was a full length fan film prequel set a few days prior to the original film he even did cameos by jeremy bullock which is the british actor best known for his role in star wars as the bounty hunter boba fell boba fett so it was still in post-production it never saw a release he also scripted day players which is a buddy comedy and he shot a short horror film entitled house of cards at the, his garage he rented in the south end of edmonton now this is where he goes crazy on october the 10th of october of 2008 mr johnny who was 38 told his friends he was going to meet jen now, Jen was supposed to be a woman he had been chatting with on an online dating website called Plenty of Fish. Within days, however, his friends started to receive, receive very bizarre emails from him saying that he had explained in the emails that he had met this woman and had fallen madly in love with her and she was taking him on this wonderful vacation to Costa Rica. Understandably, his friends found this very bizarre. This was just not Johnny's behavior it just was not his character it felt totally out of line it wouldn't be like him to just totally run away with a woman he'd only known for a very brief period of time um so his friends basically broke into his condo um dread washed over him of course because they found his passport dirty dishes just um he had not packed any clothes they could tell um and he couldn't travel to, to costa rica without his passport so Come to find out, the person that Altinger had been speaking with online wasn't a woman at all, but it was Twitchell. Twitchell had recently shot a sh the short film with several of his friends. Of course, like I said, the House of Cards. Followed the House of Cards, a man who was lured from the internet dating website to a garage where a killer was lying in wait. Once inside the garage, the unsuspected was attacked by a sadistic killer that binds him to a table and murders him with a butcher's knife. It is also transpired his film was a practice run for the real murder with Johnny Altinger, who was his victim. Now, just the week beforehand, Twitchell had lured another man into the garage by pretending to be a woman. This was an intended victim named Giles Tetriault. And when he arrived at the garage, Twitchell came to hit him with a stun baton. Thankfully, though, he fought back and managed to escape. He later explained that he didn't go to the police after the attack because he had threatened him if he did. He would be killed as well. He would follow through on his threat. Now, supposedly when Altucher arrived at the address provided by Jen, he received a text message telling him to come out into the garage where she would be waiting. And this was also the same garage Twitchell had rented for the movie he had shot weeks earlier. It was set up like a kill room, much like the scene from the TV series Dexter. Uh, which just so happened to be Twitchell's favorite TV show. Now, in the center of the garage was a heavy metal table the size of a pool table. The table was covered and surrounded by plastic sheets to catch blood splatter, just like in Dexter. Now, once Altinger was inside, Twitchell ambushed him with a butcher knife and a heavy pipe. 
he bludgeoned him with a pipe and then stabbed him to death. And then he became began dismembering him and attempted to burn his remains. When this was unsuccessful, he dumped his limbs and organs in a sewer. Now, after the murder, he sat down at his laptop and he began writing and typing a new story. And it read, this story is based on true events. The names and events are altered slightly to protect the guilty. This is the story of my progression into becoming a serial killer. Now, he began, he was so easily tracked down, Mark was. Again, this is him, how innocent he looked. Uh, Altinger had sent an email to a friend on the day that he had disappeared with directions to Jen's house. So, Twitchell was quickly apprehended and interrogated. They interviewed him twice, and on the second time they interviewed him, uh, he told the authorities he had no idea who Jen or Altinger were. But then when they confiscated and searched his laptop, that's where they found the very extreme, disturbing, uh, dark and violent story that he had started to write following the murder of Altinger. It also was evident that the story was mu very much fact as opposed to fiction. Because in the story, Twitchell wrote in detail about the slaying of Altinger and alluded to the fact that he was planning on killing a new victim each Friday. He gruesomely described how he played with Altinger's severed head. And we're not going to go into detail right now with all that. But you can check all that out online and see. Um, and how he, you know, did the different things to clean up the evidence and all of that. Um, he was interrogated and all by the police and they realized that things were just not right. Now, he also wrote a thing um, called SK Confessions, so Serial Killer Confessions, and that's where they found that story based on his true events. But then he also on his computer had something called Profile of a Psychopath, and the investigators believe it was written by him as well, and it was a detailed self-analysis of personality and behavior. It was not released until after the trial ended because it was deemed too inflammatory and would compromise the trial. Now, they charged him back and convicted him of murder April the, of 2011 uh, with a maximum sentence Life in prison with no parole, eligibility for 25 years, and therefore eliminated any need to proceed with any charges on the first situation where he tried to attempt to murder Mr. Giles Tetrioff. So, they didn't charge him with that as well. They were going to treat it as two different cases instead of trying to combine them, um, even though they had a little bit of connection. Well, media controversy played a big issue in the courtroom, and they kept everything secret and kind of protected uh, bands and everything on everything because they didn't want it to affect the jury trial and the jury pool who was polled. Well, he tried to use that against him and yada, yada. It was one thing after another. He kept trying to appeal different things, and he abandoned his appeals in 2012. Also... Part of that large media presence was American television programs like Dateline NBC and 48 Hours. Now, post-media coverage, in 2012, Michael Hall, who is the actor who portrays Dexter Morgan on the television series, was interviewed by a Canadian radio show. And they were saying that they hope that people don't watch Dexter just to support the lifestyle of the serial killer. He said, I would hope that people's appreciation is more than some sort of fetish with the killing scenes. Uh, he, said, I, he said, I wouldn't stop making Dexter because someone was fascinated but by it only in that way. He said, I try to tell myself that their fixation is on the nature of why the people are doing what they're doing. Um, and, and somehow, you know, that Dexter had something to do with it would be horrifying because he would feel really bad. The, the um, author and producer of Dexter would feel horrible if it was just because of the killing scenes. Now, in May of 2013, it was reported that Twitchell had purchased a television for his prison cell. Twitchell stated that he had caught up on all of the Dexter episodes that he missed since he was arrested and convicted of first-degree murder. 
Now, he was also featured on American News Magazine, Crime Watch Daily in 2017. It focused on his methods and features um, in his interviews um, and all of those things with his first intended victim, uh, author of the book called The Devil's Cinema, which was focused on the case itself, written by Steve Lulibon. Um, and part of the report included a return trip by um, Giles Tetrault, which was the first man, he went back and visited the garage in which the incident had taken place. So if you want to see some books about the case, um, the names of them, The Devil's Cinema, 2012, by Steve Lillibon. It's a true crime account of the case and trial with the cooperation of Mark Twitchell himself. And then the one who got away in 2015 was written by the first victim or would-be victim, Giles Tetriot, and it's a personal count by the original intended target of Tritchell. Now, you can also find, um, if you look and check out, 48 Hours did what's called a screenplay for murder in 2012. You can check it out. You can also check out the CK Confessions Manuscript online and it goes into great detail it's kind of morbid and gross um so being in that mind of a serial killer uh, or would be dexter killer um infamous dexter killer so if you want to see the sk confessions manuscript and go into more detail you can find it online you can also find mark twitchell's profile of a psychopath that he had typed up on his laptop you can find it as well and you can also find the email exchange between Altinger and Twitchell posted um, as himself dating as a woman. So again, I'm going to show you their pictures again. This was Mark Twitchell. This is John Bryan, Johnny Altinger, his victim. And then here's a picture of the movie cast Dexter Morgan and Mark together. Now, to give you a little bit of information about Johnny um, that you may not have known, he was just a regular man. He was 38 years old. He worked in the old field as an old field equipment manufacturer. And when he went disappeared, disappeared, it was in October of 2008. So, very interesting. Check that story out. It's just kind of weird how, um, De you know, Dexter, the TV show, uh, inspired other people that are kind of evil. It brought out their true self um, or would-be serial killer, basically. Um, and he just got sloppy about it. He didn't, he wasn't careful about it. Uh, you know, and it, it's sad because he wasted his career. He had, like I said, a wife and a child, a little eight-month-old child. So um, why people do things that they do, we don't know. Uh, even we could try to get in the mind of a serial killer, but unless you're a serial killer, you don't understand. You just don't know. Um, and I hope to God nobody, you know, wants to be like that and wants to be a serial killer um, or wants that kind of media or fame uh, because it's very sad. Um, you can find, like I said, all kinds of more detailed information research online i just thought this was an interesting one but here you have a movie and then there's somebody wanting to portray the actual movie character himself uh but he did get sloppy and careless and got caught until next week i hope y'all have a wonderful day and i will catch y'all next mystery monday